Live from the Oval on the campus of Darien High School, it's Varsity Girls Soccer on the DAF Media Network this afternoon on a beautiful day here in Darien, Connecticut. It's the Darien Blue Wave against the Brian McMahon Senators, and we are underway. Hi, everybody. I'm Damian Andrews. So glad you could be with us for this DAF Media broadcast of Varsity Girls Soccer. The DAF Media Network is a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. So glad to be with you this afternoon. Joining me on the broadcast, as he so often does, is John Bradley, the head coach of the Darien Boys soccer team. And uh, we've got uh, what we hope will be a good one this afternoon between the blue wave, the blue wave in the blue uniforms with the right white numbers moving from left to right on your screen. Brian McMahon, the visiting team, comes in here with their white uniforms, the uh, navy blue numbers, and they are moving from right to left on your screen. This is a very big game early in the season for both teams. So the winning team here is going to be right in that hunt for a top spot in the FCX. Neither team's coming here today for a draw. Be interesting to see this first 15 minutes who can get a foot on the ball. Darianne will be looking to outrun them in midfield. And here's Darianne as they uh, push the pace here early on. And a nice defensive effort that time by McMahon's uh, Peyton uh, Korzenik. Number 12, ball slides out of bounds. It'll be. Yeah, I think you're gonna have two, two contrasting styles here. As I said, I think McMahon had simply lined up in a 4-4-2. They've got solid um, midfield here. Darian overloaded the midfield with five. So it'd be interesting to see the two center midfields from McMahon, Kalen Ortiz and Vivi Luna, two very technical players. Darianne will be looking for them not to get on the foot on the ball. And obviously they'll be looking to get it wide to McNamara. It seems as though Darianne... Darianne right now content, seems to sit back and let McMahon have the ball. It's definitely two interesting contrasting styles here. Throwing to Darianne here, over here. Caitlin Hocker, formerly of Darianne. Maggie Ramsey with the clearance. Looking for Chloe Humphrey. Darianne here with an opportunity but Chloe Humphrey just couldn't get enough on that. She was offside, so I'm not sure it would have mattered how much she got on it. Yep. It was, uh, she just about a yard or two offside there. And she knew it when she... But again, that's, that'll be, uh, that was actually a good ball from Quinn to Humphrey there. With a free kick here to... Humphrey had a, had a, uh goal in the last game we broadcast here at the Oval against Trumbull. Darianne winning that game 2-1. to one. Again, thanks to everybody for watching this on the DAF Media Network. Our production crew this afternoon includes our director, Colin Adams, our camera one operator, Braden Schenk, and our ISO camera operator back on the crew is the great Ryan Smith. And here's a throw in on the far side of the field for Brian McMahon. Of course, the name to keep an eye on, John, or the number, I should the say, is nine. Uh, Peyton McNamara, you just saw her uh, touch the ball. Yeah, she's had a she's a little uh, banged up. Clearly, in my own opinion, head and shoulders, the best player in the league. Um, she's out here on the left-hand side. They'll be looking to find her as much as possible. But again, I think if Darianne can win the midfield battle, then uh, they can definitely take advantage and get more attacking opportunities and win this game. Again, ironically, I'm commentating on a game where I think I've coached three-quarters of the players on the field. <laughs>
John, of course, used to be the uh, girls soccer coach here at Darien High School, and he was replaced after he took over the boys program by Lee Parsons, who is in his ninth season as the head coach of the Blue Wave uh, girls varsity soccer program. Hard to believe that Coach Parsons uh, has been here that long, but he has, has had a lot of success. Of course, a couple of years ago, made that nice run to the state semifinals, ended up losing to Staples up at Fairfield Ludlow High School in the state semifinals, but made a nice run that year. And of course, these two teams met twice last year, once in the regular season. It was a 1-1 draw. And then Darianne beat McMahon in the state tournament, first round of the state tournament last year, 2-0. Yeah, as I said, if I look at the early results this season, as I said, McMahon, uh, Stanford Danbury would be expected. Uh, they had a good win against Ludlow. Again, and then Darianne, mixed bag of results to Danbury. Great result against Trumbull. So I said that the, this is really a good gauge for both of these teams. I said I expect both of these teams to be in that fifth through eighth spot in the FCAC, but it's so tight up there that games like this can... Uh, really put you on the map and get your season going in the right direction. So a free kick here for Darianne, Colette Quinn, the freshman. <laughs> Quinn settles. And that's what you don't want to do. Let's see what happens here. And McNamara with the takeaway. And she is dangerous in the open field. Yes, but look how quickly Darianne got five bodies back there. You might need 11 bodies. I mean, you've got to have someone shadowing her, John, correct, throughout yeah, this match. Yeah, I, I think they're, as I said, number uh, Riley Gullick up front, who's decent. Uh, McNamara probably could have slipped her in there. But again, it's early, so you want to test that Darianne defense. I think that's where you see the athleticism of the Darianne team. I mean, you had six players recover there like it was a track meet. So I think that that's a very key instruction that possibly the coaches have uh, told the kids at the moment she gets the ball, not one, not two, but everyone gets to that ball. Here's Riley Gullick on the ball. That's a great turn. Nice turn by Should Gullick, the sophomore. That's good ball movement. Kaylin Ortiz. John, I know running. you're always fond of, uh, we obviously broadcast last night's uh, 3-3 draw between you and Brian McMahon at Casa Grande Field. I know you're always fond of seeing uh, McMahon. You obviously uh, began your FCA coaching career at Brian McMahon. Uh, yeah, I was... Uh, and again, I said ironically, uh, I've got a lot of close connections with a lot of the kids in both schools. I said three of the four midfielders today uh, for McMahon actually play on my club team. So it's nice to see them all doing well at varsity level. Again, a lot of the Darianne kids I've seen grow up as well. So that's why I love commentating on games like today. That's why this game is going to be really cat and mouse because both teams know each other so well. So it's going to be who can exploit the other's weaknesses quickly. As I said, Darianne looking to dominate the midfield. And McMahon looking for the quick counter attack here. It's interesting for McMahon, as I said, I, I personally believe that Peyton McNamara is the, the best player in the league and it's a, isolating her outside on the left uh, will be an interesting, I don't know if she's played there every game. Um, well, Peyton McNamara, the numbers certainly don't lie. What she has uh, helped this program do over the last three years, she has started day one as a freshman, an early commit to Ohio State in the Big Ten. Uh, she has held that commitment, so she's headed to play for the Buckeyes after this, her senior season. But uh, last year, uh, the last two years, McMahon, the seventh seed in the FCAC tournament, and they've made the state playoffs the last three seasons. And uh, let's face it, a lot of that has to do with the play of Peyton McNamara, who's just a terrific player, as you just said, oh. uh, maybe the best player in the conference, certainly one of the top players in the state of Connecticut. Yeah, it's just a it's just an interesting way to play with her isolated out wide because if she was playing in the middle of the field she could control the game. Out here she depended on teammates to get her the ball. Um, I personally like seeing her play through the middle of the field. 
Um, but we'll see. They may have seen something on film in Darien that they're looking to exploit. We have Riley there on the right hand side. Riley to Riley. Gulick on the far side of the field. Here's Darianne now as they try to clear it. And this goes back to Brian McMahon. Exciting game last night under the lights at Casa Grande Field. If you liked goals in soccer and a lot of them, well, that was the game for you. 3 3 draw and a back and forth seesaw affair between Brian McMahon and Darianne in varsity boys soccer. Yeah, a win would have been great, but I'll tell you that was a fantastic game last night. I want to thank John Cross, the athletic director of Brian McMahon, and uh, Rodrigo Guzman, the head coach of the McMahon boys varsity team for their hospitality and uh, allowing us to set up our live stream at Casa Grande Field. Just terrific facility. Obviously, it's the home for a number of uh, state playoff games in uh, lacrosse and has hosted a lot of FCAC tournament games in the past. Yeah, I mean, for the neutral spectator, I think it was a great game. It was fast, frenetic, six goals. Again, as much as we'd have liked to have won. I think the Darien boys were fantastic last night. Uh, then we get to go tomorrow again to Bridgeport Central. Where hopefully we can pick up uh, another win. That's well defended. And here's the, here's the issue with me having McNamara out here. Right now, the Darien game plan to me seems to be working better. Darien controlled in the middle of the field. That's nice soccer there. Again, our DAF media production crew, all student volunteers, and uh, as always, do a terrific job. Colin Adams back in the director's chair for the first time since uh, the Darien Staples field hockey game at uh, Staples. Ryan Smith is on camera too. Great to have him back in the saddle on the ISO camera. And our camera one operator, uh, who has done a terrific job thus far. This is freshman season at uh, Darien and working with DAF Media is Braden Schenk. Darien with a great opportunity here. It said it's a... Uh, another free kick here for the Blue Wave. Colette Quinn will take this, number seven, on the far side of the field. Great crowd here today as well in this game. Well, John, let's let's face it. This is not uh, English countryside weather. This is uh, just beautiful this afternoon. Gorgeous out here. This is a, a great slight tennis. breeze. That's a great ball. Ball into the box. Sails over the crossbar on the free kick. Quinn showing... Uh, off the strength in that right leg of hers. <laughs> Kayla Cochia. Oh, again, as you can see, the senior it's changed. For McMahon. If we look at, uh, Damon, if you can see the change that McMahon have made already, they've already switched McNamara into the middle of the field. Yep. That's a uh, good job by the coach. If you got it wrong, switch it and don't worry about it. So 10 minutes in, we're going to see now, as I said, Darian was dominating the midfield. Now we'll see uh, how the next five, ten minutes goes for both teams. No real chances yet for either team. A lot of the game's taking place in the middle of the field. So I think McMahon have spotted something there where they'll be looking to get McMahon and the ball in the middle of the field and see if they can get. Brian McMahon coming into this game undefeated. One of only four teams in the FC Act right now undefeated early part of the season. And they beat uh, Stamford 5-zip, they beat Ludlow 3-zip, and they beat Danbury 4-2. I had the chance to talk to head coach Angelo Singerliotis before the game and his assistant, Nicole Stockfish. I've known both of them for a long time. And he said, we will definitely be uh, tested this afternoon. This is a step up in class for us early on. Damien, little did you know. Stockfish used to be one of my assistants. I too. know she did. Back I did in the know day, that. You know I that one. did know that. He's got all the facts right there. I did know that. Yep. I've known Nicole great, for a long time. Great coach. And of course, uh, 
Longtime Brian McMahon, athletic director Joe Mattaferri, retired at the end of last school year. So uh, John Cross, the baseball coach, is now the AD at Brian McMahon. And uh, I still expected to see him last night. Yeah, I know. It was. It was. I said to John Cross, who I've known for a long time as well. I said it was weird not seeing Joe in his golf cart, uh, taking care of things. Uh, I said, very, really a scrappy start, not to be uh, unexpected. If, if you hear the crowd go quiet, it is, that's it, because Mr. Softy's just got here and they're all going to get an ice cream, so the crowd's going to be silent for a little bit. But again, McMahon on the attack here. It's only a matter of time before one of these teams gets a breakaway. It's too congested in the middle of the field, and once they start to commit more bodies forward, the game's really going to open up. And that was almost it. Might still be it. And Darian uh, taking the old lacrosse philosophy. They're literally having uh, this could have been the breakaway. But it's going to be interesting here with Melissa Moman marking McNamara to see how long she can do it for. I mean, that is an exhausting job. Much easier in the cross to face guard than run after someone in soccer for 80 minutes. But so far, she's done a great job containing McNamara. Um, throw in here to Darianne. That's well cleared by McMahon. It's a good tackle there by Vivi Luna. Vivi's one of those players with excellent dribbling ability. If she gets in the open space, she's a fantastic on the ball. I'm not particularly sure there why she's releasing uh, Riley Gullick there. There wasn't enough space to have, to have that pass. I think see, that's what McNamara was just mentioning to her, that when you see the field open up like that, that's what Luna needs to take that ball onto the space. So finishing ability is excellent. Fox with a good clearance there. Looks like a goalie change as well for Darianne today. Uh, not quite sure if it's uh, if Maniscalco is injured or it's just a change. But something. Maniscalco, the senior captain keeper, and Fox, the young freshman goalie. So uh, could be an injury or could just be a change from the coaches. We'll maybe we'll find that out at halftime. That's well done by McMahon. That's well defended. Again, Luna with a great turn there. Well defended by Darien. Again, that something Chloe Humphrey does very well is hold this ball up. Again, if Darien Kane can just get one player linking up with her. But again, part of the problem is once you ask Bellissimo, again, it's a tough job on Bellissimo because you see the moment she moves away from McNamara for a few minutes, she then goes back and. Uh, gets on her again so it's, it's it's a great job so far by Darianne for the first 20 minutes just be real interesting to see if they can keep it up for the rest of the half Damien next to me, the wind's picking up again like normal. <laughs> it's, uh, again, Foxy here with a goal kick. That's a good header there by Courtney Ball. 
Well done by Tyler again. This is where Darianne will be looking not to turn the ball over. If you hear this voice in the background that doesn't shut up, that would be the lovable Charlie Sears who won't be quiet. Charlie Sears, leave the ref alone. If Humphrey can find someone to link up with, again, that's well done. There's no one really to link, link up with there. Again, that's an excellent job by Bellissimo. Again, yeah, that, that's a good decision there. She had to look to take someone on there. There was no one to link up with, again, which is going to happen because Darianne doing a great job here at containing Dolce here on the ball. If they can get that, that's a nice combination play there. Out to Quinn, if Quinn can get this back out wide. Looks like we think someone might be injured. We're not sure at the moment. Yep. Look like Peyton Korsenik had to go off there. Valentina Villa, another great two-sport athlete in soccer and lacrosse at McMahon. Again, Darian doing a great defensive job today. It's an intriguing game. I don't really remember either team having a shot. Clearance there by Jocelyn Lister. Again, you kind of said you've got a bit of a stalemate here. You've got the two contrasting styles. A very defensive game, as I said, neither team had a shot yet. And again, a lot of very good two sport athletes on both teams here playing. That's well intercepted there by Lister. That's a great ball out wide. This could be the first passage of play if McMahon can link up here. Now it's going to be easily defended by Niffin. Got a gorgeous day over here at Darien High School. Very even game here. Yeah, McMahon starting to possess the ball a little better, but again, the Darianne defence doing a fantastic job today. Not allowing McMahon a sniff of it. And if you look at McMahon's opening few games, I mean, McMahon's been scoring goals for fun. 11 goals so far in three games. 12 goals in three games. So, uh, again, Darianne done a good job today. I'm not sure that Darianne's going to be able to keep this 0-0, though, so eventually Darianne's going to potentially have to take a chance. Peyton Korsanik just came on, which has been a quick injury of some sort, but she looks good to go. Ramsey here with the throw for Darian. A 
again, their their possessions where if the forward can just flick that on, it can give Darianne a little chance to breathe there. Darianne just turned the ball straight over now, throwing to McMahon. Good turn by Riley Garlic. Well headed by Ramsey. This is going to be a tough ball to defend here. Again, that's a real hopeful shot from distance. Again, McMahon struggling with uh, to get the link up going, play going here. Leave Lenahan doing a, a decent job out here, as is Cassidy Nash. But as I said, you're definitely not going to beat Gillian Fox from that distance. So you're going to have to be a little bit more creative. Like I said, Bellissimo's doing a great job on McNamara in the middle of the field. It's just a question of if she can keep this up for the, the rest of the half. Sorry, I left you there, John, for a few minutes. We had some uh, internet connectivity issues. We are uh, back live, and we apologize for that. Leave Lenahan getting in behind here. Okay, that's a throw into McMahon down in the far left-hand corner. Yeah, it's been a while since I remember Nobody having a shot in 26 minutes. It's a good throw, and if she can flick that on. Again, Darian did an excellent job today defending. That's oh, a great save by Gillian Fox. First great passage of play there. Great ball by, by KK Ortiz. And uh, Garlic there with a great chance. Great save by, with, by Fox with her legs there. Very impressive. So Garlic could be in there. That's a well cleared by McMahon. Again, that's great. That's two players to the ball there. Well defended by Darian. Jordan Vaught there with a great ball up to Humphrey. Looks like Darian has switched now to a 4-4-2 formation. Again, we're pretty much watching a game of 10 on 10 with Bellissimo just tracking McNamara around the field. Said so Darianne challenging the other McMahon players to beat him today. And again, that was a great save by Fox from Garlic. And first real opportunity of the day. That's. That's good, tough defending there. Hocker there, again, once off Darianne, another excellent two-sport athlete in hockey and soccer. Again, it's all a bit too scrappy from McMahon too. That's a little too easy giving the ball away there. Excellent there by Niffin, out to Ramsey. It's a good passage of play there by Darianne. Can they connect the last pass? Just a clearance there by Peyton Korsenik. Decent few passes there by, the, by Darianne. That's a great throw. Well defended there. Got to throw into McMahon on the far right hand side. It's tough, a little lack of movement of this throwing. Again, McMahon is starting to drop a little bit too deep here. 
which is playing right into the hands of Darianne. The rally garlic dropped in to receive that ball. There was no one up top to help. Again, great work there by Darianne Jocelyn Lister over there with the uh, cover. Looks like that ball's just gone out around the halfway line. It's a good header, but it looks again as though McMahon have gone to now one, one forward. We've got Vivi Luna getting kind of caught in the middle here. I'm not sure quite whether she's playing attack in midfield or forward. I definitely think McMahon could push on here and put uh, Luna up top with Garlic to get Darien under a little bit more pressure. It's well defended there. Courtney Ball with a great header. That was a uh, very generous call there, but Darianne will take it. As I said, it's a great opportunity to get the ball in the box. I think McMahon will be a little disappointed if there's a goal that comes from this. I think the, the Interesting that Garlic's out here, one of the taller players for McMahon. It's a good strike. Well cleared. Well cleared by Lister. Throw it here to Darianne. Again, it only takes one opportunity to score a goal. Hopefully Darianne can get an opportunity soon and take it. Oh, great goal there, and there's the first goal of the day by Quinn. That's a fantastic strike. As I said, it only takes one opportunity. Fantastic strike for the top of the box. Goalie had no chance, and uh, in the game, and in the game, in the game, not really dominated by either team. As I said, McMahon have only had one shot. Uh, that's it. Now, now it's going to challenge the uh, McMahon coaching staff to see exactly what they can produce and what they can change because there haven't really been uh, a force going forward today. I think. So now we'll see if this game is finally going to open up, and we'll see what McMahon can do here. Darian, if they can continue to keep this up and play like this, can walk out of here with a win today for sure. We get a great strike there from Quinn. Darian will be looking here to lock up this last seven minutes. Just over seven minutes to go in the half. If Darian can keep playing the way they are, keep it tight, Darian will take a lead in here to the half. And again, it, it's hopeful here by McMahon. Garlic dropping deeper and deeper. As I said, the McMahon coaching staff now are going to have to figure out a new game plan. I think definitely they could push two players up top. The Darian, Darian defence here has played very, very well. But also McMahon are making it easy on them. So now I said the McMahon coaching staff is going to be challenged here to mix stuff up. Otherwise, I don't see any way that they're going to get back into this game. I think Darian are looking so comfortable in defence. So again, we apologise. We've been having some... Uh technical issues but uh, we seem to have had them ironed out and terrific game thus far still late in the first half here one nothing uh, Darianne on the Colette Quinn goal so the freshman stepping up in a big spot you 
Here's Quinn again. Free kick here. Just inside midfield. Another great strike. Could be another goal. Yep. And it is a goal. And that's two goals, as I said. That's Get another. I got, I'm, I'm doing a replay on the odds. That's another fantastic strike by Quinn. We're going to take another look at that. Nice job here. Great camera work by our Braden Schenk. And here it is from behind the goal. And just creeps in. Again, McNamara now finally on the ball. We'll see what she can do. I think Darian's going to get two people with her right now for sure. And again, like I said, the McMahon coaching staff here, they've had a relatively uh, easy start to the season with a couple of the games they've played, and now they're getting challenged a little bit. And uh, who's gonna, the question is who's going to step up on this McMahon team and help McNamara? You saw there when she got isolated. Throw in here to Darianne. Just over five minutes left in the half. Great pick up there by Humphrey. If Darianne can get the third goal before half time, this game's over. Great work there by Charlotte to Min. Looking to switch the field.
The signs are there. Kids are back at school. The beaches are emptying out. Summer is winding down in southwestern Connecticut. Hi, everybody. I'm Damian Andrew. It's hard to believe, but it's year three of DAF Media. Thanks to the hard work of dozens of student and adult volunteers, we live streamed more than 250 events in our first two years. This is all possible through generous grants from the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Well, the spring produced uh, state champions and conference champions at Darien High School, and we couldn't be more excited about what this fall has in store. The Blue Wave football team is hard at work under the watchful eye of longtime head coach Rob Trafone, who later this year will be inducted into the Connecticut High School Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Now, Darien exited last season unfulfilled after dropping its final two games and for the first time since 2014 the wave didn't hoist a state championship plaque but expectations are high this season there's a new qb1 and the defense returns some big time playmakers daf media's ted brennan recently caught up with coach trafone to get his thoughts on the season and his hall of fame nod thank you damien coach Congrats on being elected into the Connecticut High School Coaches Association Hall of Fame. You were recently honored at halftime of a UConn football game. How special was that for you? Uh, very special. Number one, I got an opportunity to see uh, Brian Keating, BK, up there. Um, and number two, look, Connecticut has had a, a, uh, a plethora of tremendous coaches. And to be you know, honored in the same name as you know, many of those um, you know, was humbling. Coach, once again, congratulations. After winning three straight titles, you ended last season on a down note with two back-to-back -back losses. How much motivation does that provide for this season? How about all of it? <laughs> all the motivation, because um, honestly, those players, okay, were angry and, and, ha and still angry, you know, that, and of course, uh, little did we all know it, but it was the first time a program had lost two straight since 2007, I think it was, you know, it was some ridiculous streak. So, um, and it was a game against Newtown that we felt we could have won, obviously, um, and didn't want to go home early. A number of new faces this season on both sides of the ball. How is this team coming together? Uh, very good. Of course, you know, we begin to get together or come together in the weight room. You know, uh, December through March, uh, you know, we've got 60 kids in the weight room, you know, bonding and starting to learn how to be a team. And then there's passing leagues and passing tournaments, you know, all throughout the off season. So that's really when they begin to bond, you know. And now we walk into, you know, the preseason and they're already pretty tight. You've coached your sons in the past. Your son, Mark, is a senior this year. What's that been like coaching your kids? Well, uh, you know what, it's a two-headed monster. So, you know, on, on the one side, the good side, it's awesome. You get uh, to spend time with your own sons and, you know, where many dads are either in the city or somewhere else and don't see their, their you know, uh, son or daughter, for that matter, until 7 or 8 o'clock. You know, the other side is he's your son. So I'm always harder on him than anyone else. <laughs> I get reminded of that uh, often by my wife. Um, but because I, you know, expect a lot out of him. And I know that, you know, if he walks or shows up late, that it's a bad reflection on everything. So I think he, he knows I'm a little harder on him than, than I should be. Coach, good luck on the season. Thank you for taking the time to interview with us. Damian, back to you in the booth. Head coach Mo Minikis has built the Blue Wave field hockey program into one of the state's best. Darianne has won eight of the last 11 FCAC championships. And while there's been no outright state title since 2013, there's always a reason for optimism. The history of the Darianne High School girls volleyball program is written on the walls inside Main Gym. Banners display conference championships and state championships. Head coach Lori LaRusso and a stream of talented players are the architects behind this perennial power. The Wave hasn't won an FCAC title since 2014, but it's a new season with high expectations. Now, while the Blue Wave boys soccer team missed out on the conference playoffs again last season, there was a marked improvement from the year before. While Darianne lost a number of players to graduation, there's plenty of talent back this season, including all-conference center back Charlie Sears. 
The Blue Wave girls soccer program has never won a conference or state championship, although Derry Ann's had plenty of success in recent years. There was a run to the state semifinals two years ago. Head coach Lee Parsons is back as head coach, and the Blue Wave figure to once again be a contender in the FCAC. The Darianne boys and girls cross country teams have enjoyed plenty of success through the years. They'll have their sights set on the FCAC championship meet at Waveney Park and the state meet. And as always, the Darianne girls swim team figures to be a contender in the pool. As you can see, we have an exciting fall season ahead. Of course, we'll also have live streams of choral and orchestra concerts throughout the year. You can find our entire schedule on our YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash DAF Media. I'm Damian Andrew, and thanks for watching.
a great throw. Goal kick here from McMahon. Dude, you always gotta get the follow through. Collision near midfield. And Riley Gulick, the sophomore, jumps right back up. Yeah, I mean possibly as I said, I would be I would switch Garlic and Luna, or to be fair in high school what difference lose by three, lose by five makes a difference. I think you could put Garlic, McNamara, and Luna up top here together. Again, well cleared there by, by Cordy Ball. Again, just another no end product there from McMahon. Oh, it looks like a corner to Darien. Again, the McMahon need a goal, we need a little bit of urgency, and again, just a very slow. build up here as I said put a few more people in the box and take a chance it's a good corner but again a good clear by Nell Niffin it's a great move by Niffin there's a two on one here for Darianne if they can turn it quickly Bellissimo tracks it down in the corner. That's great work there by both Blissmo and Lister and McMahon. So Min and Tyler come into the game and Chloe Humphrey and Jordan Vaught check out. Kate Min. Kate Min had a goal, her first varsity goal in that 2-1 uh, win over Trumbull that we broadcast here from the center oval, John. And that, yeah, was, that, was, a, that, was, a, that was a game that, uh, you know, was an impressive win for Darianne because Trumbull is always, year in and year out, a solid team, terrific program there. And Darianne came ready to play. Yeah, that's a, again... Great win against Trumbull, and again, another. This is the best performance uh, of the season so far. Just got to hold on tight for the last 20 minutes. You don't want to give that McMahon any hope here. Again, it, it's just a, a lack of ideas there, as I said. It's a 25-yard shot with your left foot. Cassidy Nash that time, and... Jillian Fox didn't even have to come off her line, just stood right there and uh, corralled the ball. I was impressed actually by Garlic up top. I thought she uh, had a good game. I'd definitely be looking to. Uh, Push her back up if possible. But again, it looks now that, as I said, there's realistically no way back into the game for McMahon. Darien mixing a few players up now. Darian back on the attack here. Thank you. 
But it looks to me like uh, we are McMahon also content to see this game out. Mike Lamar on the bench now. We are under uh, 18 minutes remaining in this game between Darian and McMahon. Be interesting to find out at the end if Mike Lamar is injured or he just pulled her off. Hopefully the latter. Yeah, such a talented player. You certainly hope she uh, didn't sustain an injury. I can always it's ask her mom. She's just sitting in front of us <laughs> out there. <laughs> it's been all blue wave. Up three goals here in the second half with time ticking down. And again, we've... Uh, had some technical issues in this live stream for those of you watching this live. But you'll be able to see the broadcast in its entirety after the game has concluded. Quinn here will be looking to take another shot. Oh, played it in there. Nice work by Darian again. Again, a thoroughly dominating performance from Darian today from start to finish. Riley Steger there with a good ball. Like I said, it's just an interesting... I've got my fingers crossed here, McNamara is not injured. Um, if she isn't, it's a kind of a little interesting approach to, uh, to, to take her off. There was still a long time left in that game and she could definitely be a game changer. We're closing in on October here, John, but uh, it is just summer-like weather here on the pitch. Center Oval on the campus of Darien High School. The throw-in here by Papadopoulos, the junior. And here's Katie Chandler on the near side of the field. And this will test for both teams, and I'd say Darien passed with flying colors, and... Uh McMahon, it's a little bit back to the drawing board to figure out, again, a lot of, and again, I've been there, I've, I've, we've started off uh, very hit on miss as well with the own with our own Darien boys teams, but they've got to clean up a lot of their touches on the ball. It needs to get crisper because this is a grueling schedule and you've got eight or nine extremely hard games um, in this girls division and uh, they're not going to be able to depend on two or three players to carry the load. Again, just over 14 minutes to go here. I think the main technical difficulty is I forgot to bring my shorts today. That's about it. Boy, I it tell is you, roasting. It, it, it <laughs> I, uh, I do have the shorts and the short sleeve shirt on, and uh, I'm glad I do, John. It is, it is warm. Slight breathe. Mellon. Eleanor Mellon, the senior, comes in for Darianne, number 28. And this was a big game with Darianne said they got a very uh this was a huge game with obviously Central on Friday, which uh Under the will lights. be an easy win. Yeah, I mean that's uh that's gonna be a great game to get lots of players, lots of minutes and again the starters today have, have, have put in a hell of a shift and worked really hard so this is a great win. By Chandler. And a signature win for Darianne this season, I think more impressive than the trouble win. Yeah, well, I mean, McNamara certainly is the type of player that can, uh, you know, take over any game. We know that. And she uh, was pretty much silenced uh, this afternoon. So next up for Brian McMahon will be their first home game of the season, Friday against Greenwich. 
And Darian, of course, already has a win over the Cardinals, a 3 nothing win. Um, and for Darianne, as you mentioned, John, home central. And that uh, game will be under the lights at Stadium Field. Papadopoulos, the throw in. Whistle, and that's going to be against Darianne. It'll be uh, Brian McMahon ball here. A free kick. So an opportunity for the Senators. Just 12 minutes to go here. There's Korzenik. And Courtney Ball. Again, right there. Throw in here to McMahon. Another good header there by Nathan. Again, it's the end product again. Again, the game winding down nicely for Darian here. We are approaching the 10 minute mark here in this game between the Senators and the Blue Wave. Korzenik here, the free kick. And again, Darianne right there, well defended, Nell Niffin. That's a great play there by Darianne. Almost a nice counter attack. Justin Tyler. A sun splash day here in Darien, Connecticut. You are watching Varsity Girls Soccer on the DAF Media Network. DAF Media is a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation in year three of existence. And our DAF Media production crew, our director, Colin Adams, the great Ryan Smith, who was on camera two. Sam Cragen has joined the fray. And he has taken over the camera two duties for now as uh, Smith catches a breather. And camera one is Braden Schenk. And all student volunteers do a terrific uh, job. Of course, Ryan Smith will be on the uh, rugby field in the spring. Looking forward to that. Here's Dolce. It's a good shot. Dolce with a shot, oh, and it just effort. slides by wide left on the shot by Dolce. And what an athlete she is, a three-sport athlete at Darianne High School. Plays uh, lacrosse in the uh, spring, basketball in the winter, and she's on the soccer pitch in the fall. Again, just over eight minutes to go here. You got Totally dominating performance by Darian, especially to bounce back after their frustrating performance against Wilton. This is a uh, great all-around team performance, game plan executed perfectly. There's Quinn. Here's Stein on the far side of the field. Nice turn. 
across. That's great. Work. That was a great turn there by Stein. And Mellon was streaking down the left side of the field, but uh, too much. Ran out of real estate. There's jo Jocelyn Lister with the goal kick here. We've got the JV game right behind us. Uh, we're going to check the score over there. We heard it's 3-2 to Darianne over there. Another great game. It's fantastic the way people can come and side by side have two games. It's a fantastic venue for soccer over here. These facilities are just terrific. As I look across the field, I can remember the first time, you probably don't remember this, but I remember the first time that I ever had an extensive conversation with you it was right over there to the left of the Darianne bench. And we were talking about that great run you made to the state finals. Uh, it's a miracle run. We were, you, Maybe we do it you, again. You ended up yeah. losing uh, to Glastonbury, and of course, as you know, Glastonbury just a top-notch program in upstate Connecticut, year in and year out. But uh, that's when I first had my first real encounter with the John Bradley. Yeah, as I said, I think the the and it's been a perfect match ever since. Beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> I think the future's bright here. I think that the. Uh, a lot of talent on this field, John. Yeah, I think on, bo I mean, on, I both, think sides. on both sides. Yeah, yeah. I think the next couple of years, I said for me that the, it's, it's the, I remember having a 16 and 0 season when I was here, which was a phenomenal group of girls. But I think the next couple of years, Darian have got a great chance here um, to potentially win a state championship here on the girls' side. I think there's so much talent on the field. A great class of eighth graders coming yeah. in. Um, That's little chip shot here and Fox comes out to haul it in and the, it, and the boys too I mean there's there's seven or eight freshmen on JV yeah we've got a, a solid group of eighth graders coming in so the, the, the futures the futures bright on both sides you got a couple of really top-notch seniors that you're gonna lose to graduation but uh, certainly uh, the well is not dry and nor is it here for the uh, Darianne Girls Varsity program. Interestingly enough, Darianne and Brian McMahon, neither program has won an FCAC or a state championship. Uh, so that's something, certainly uh, a goal that, that both I might have, I might have lost the most finals and semifinals yeah. than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quick, I should know this, and forgive me for, for uh, not remembering. You coached the boys at McMahon or the girls program? So it was the assistant girls here for three years. At McMahon. Went, no, Darianne. 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 Went to McMahon for a year. Yep. Uh, we had a great run over there. It's crazy now. Those kids are married. Yeah, like <laughs> they're not You're dating women. yourself. Yeah, they're, they're up there. Yeah. They're 30, 31, and then the Darian uh, head coach left. So since 2006, I came back as the coaching director for the town. Yep, was with the girls at 06 to 10, um, and then 11 took over the boys. Oh, it's all scrappy in there again. Fantastic defending by Darian. We're we looking to keep another clean sheet here. There's Dolce. Great ball. Could be offside. We have no idea. <laughs> the refs. We'll watch it in a second. That was Sophie Smith. Dolce, nice ball to Smith. A couple of times in the second half, Darianne has had some nice runs in transition. Yeah, look, I'm going to be honest, in the next three and a half minutes, I think both teams will be looking to get out of here with uh, with, with no injuries. It's um, It's been a fantastic performance for, for that with, by Darianne. With the joys of high school, um, McMahon had the luxury of just chalking this off to a bad day. Um, and you move on to the next game. Again, this Darianne team, with you look at the performance against Wilton and today, it, it's... It's unbelievable the turnaround you can have in a few days. Um, again, 
Great way to end the week with Central in the stadium. And then Derry will be looking to build on this next week with uh, two interesting games with Ludlow and Richfield next week. That was John's phone. <laughs> John will take a uh, quick break here. As this game winding down, we're under three minutes remaining. Three nothing, Darianne. It has been all blue wave, an impressive performance from the Darianne varsity girls soccer team. As things wind down here, John, and we get to the end of this game, we'll take a look at those goals. Yes, it was some fantastic Two by goals. Quinn, and two by Quinn, and the other by yeah, Chloe I mean, Humphrey. It, but, but, and everyone did their jobs. And when the defense does what they did, Bellissimo did a fantastic job. Courtney Ball, it, 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 and the, the goals were all quality today. And uh, again, just a fantastic all-round performance. I said, when you have that extra bit of quality, like Quinn's two fantastic goals and Humphrey's, um, that's, that was the uh, difference maker today. Like I said, the, the joys of high school, McMahon can go, regroup. It's just one game. You come back, you come back again and uh, play again on Friday, and it, it, it doesn't matter. Again, these are, I tell people, you've got 16 games to prepare you for the postseason. And as long as you can get in it, anything can happen. We've all seen a 20 seed get to the final. I mean, as long as you can get in the top eight in the FCAC and qualify for the state tournament, yep. which, which go hand That's in hand. That's what it's all about. Uh, yep. every, every year there's, there's upsets all over the place in yep. every sport. Yep. And in soccer is one of those sports where the better team doesn't always right. win on that particular yep. day. Uh, we see that uh, so many things can happen. But I'm, as I said, when we talked about finals and winning and losing, I got my state championship for girls basketball now, so I'm okay. <laughs> Darianne will uh, improve to uh, three, one, and one, and Brian McMahon will drop its first game of the season. They are now going to be three and one. Yeah, as I said, with all the mix and match of Darianne's schedule, uh, because realistically they they're going to win on Friday at four, one, and one start. Uh, after six games is, is an excellent start to the season. Um, sets them up nicely for the back end. Two interesting matchups next week with Ludlow and Ridgefield. And that will do it for this one as the Blue Wave uh, win 3 nothing. We're going to take a look at uh, the goals. As this was the first goal on the blast by Quinn. Pretty goal there as it gets in the uh, upper right hand corner of the goal. Here's our Braden Schenk on camera one with just a terrific job. And here's the second Quinn goal. And now, how about this? Uh, Ball skills by Chloe Humphrey as she deposits that in the left-hand side of the net. We're going to take another look at it here. Barely touched it, and it was enough as Cochia came out off her mark. And so we see the handshake line. Darianne wins 3 to nothing. Again, our DAF Media Production crew, our director, Colin Adams, camera one, Braden Schenk, Ryan Smith on camera two, and we had some... Uh, we had a cameo appearance by our own Sam Cragen. I want to thank all of them for their efforts in getting this live stream on the air. I want to thank you for watching. For John Bradley, I am Damian Andrew. This has been a production of the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Once again, the Darien Varsity Girls soccer team beats McMahon here at home 3-0. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Take care.